Let the games begin. It's gonna be a total knockout! Under the balls, here we go. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. Also, not trainer, so I'm missing one. And then we'll put some there, I think. Nope, me neither. Not a word. <laughs> that was okay. a fantastic montage, John. Yeah. I know. There's some <laughs> memories there. Okay, so let's, let's sum this up in a nutshell. Yeah. Most people across all six series of Total Wipeout, those lucky enough to get on it, I would say the majority of them performed at a, a certain level. Yep. Then you got some that did that little bit better, and then you got those that did that little bit better again. So, okay, so we've covered about 99% of the competitors. But then there's that elite group, isn't there? That 1%. And Chris, that's why we're talking to you today, because you <laughs> and a handful of others were just performing at a level that, well, I can say personally, because I watched you in action, and it was just jaw-dropping. And... Oh. Uh, uh, yeah, it was. Let's just say competing against you was intimidating, but watching it was just mind blowing. And I know that everyone else uh, agrees. Everyone who has lists of their top five, you're always in it. You know, top five competitors, you're in. So the fans have got questions. I've got plenty of questions as well. So, you know, we've been trying to do this now for months and we're finally getting this. Yeah. Uh, we're finally sort of meeting up. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get this thing underway. So, well, well, firstly, John, hope, hopefully the uh, I'll be able to speak a bit clearer than I did on Total Wipeout. <laughs> <laughs> Even watching it back myself, I'm like, whoa, yeah. Are yeah. you waiting for the subtitles to appear? Yeah. <laughs> but just, just, just on that, John, when you mentioned about the the elite level or the different levels, yeah. It, it, yeah. When you watch back through the episodes, it's 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 frustrating for the likes of myself to see some people win their show at say five minutes, and and then yeah. we did it at a minute and ten seconds, and still did it a minute and eleven seconds, and you still didn't win. Yeah. I can honestly say, I like for myself, I feel bad that like you and I, I mean, you were just miles quicker than me. And yet yeah. I feel it's unfair that like I ended up winning the show and yet you didn't because you're yeah. of all the people that have done it. You are one of the most deserving ones out there. I mean, God, how many, how many competitors were there? What, like a thousand across all the series? Yeah. 160 per series. It was a lot. And I, I think one of the biggest injustices was you never quite getting chance to, uh, uh, you know, to win. That was, uh, that, yeah. that was a shame. But, yeah, I, I, re I recall, I think it was the producer on the show af afterwards in the tent when we finished on the night after the champ show. And he said, to be fair, Chris, he says, I think you're probably the best, or if not one of the best contenders we've ever had on the show. You just, yeah. you just were never lucky enough to win. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Probably still, yeah. I know, it was really, uh, it was so, so unfortunate. Um, now, of course, I was going to say, what was the, you know, something I've asked everyone else is what was the starting yeah. point for you getting on the show? Did your mates put you up to it or did you watch series one? Because Yeah, so basically I was um, I was at the in-law's house um, and the father-in-law shouted us to have a, a watch what was on the TV. He said, you'd right. enjoy this. And I went through and I looked and I thought, oh, what a great show. And yeah. uh, literally at the end of that episode, it popped up. I think it was Richard Hammond saying, if you want to apply to be an applicant on the next right. series, then uh, here's the details. So I printed off an application form filled right. it out, sent it away. And I think within two weeks, I got a, um, this, this was the first TV show I'd ever applied for. So I didn't really understand oh, the process. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh definitely. Yes. <laughs> Quite yes. a few people apply for shows and don't get anywhere. Um, so, so I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, talking from, I'm talking from experience of this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so I sent yeah. that away and then within two weeks, I got notification of an interview through at Newcastle, right. um, went through there. And then the process was, um, they did the video interview, some role play you had to carry out. Um, and then I think I think they said they'd be in contact within a few weeks again, I think it was, John. And then literally I was in Asda at the time. And then it, I think it was a, one of the recruiters rang us and said, oh, we'd like to welcome you on the show. And it was like, oh, yeah, trying not to scream in Asda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah, because was it from, because you get the phone call saying that you're on the list of people they want and then they confirm you saying you're, you're definitely on the show. How yeah. much notice from that phone call to being out there? Was it was it a couple of weeks, maybe two or three weeks? Or I think it might have been a bit longer, John. Yeah, I think um, there was a few follow-up calls, sorry. Um, yeah. but I think it was getting... I'm, I'm sure they said we need to know by a certain date, and it was pretty close to that date. Um, yeah. I'd already pre-warned work, I think, at the time, that, oh, I might be 
I might be uh, have to go on to a TV show at this point, um, yeah. and then luckily enough, I got the call. Yeah. Uh, of course, with you, because you were episode seven, you were going to be one of the ones that if you made the final, you were going to have to stay out there longer. So you, it could have been a trip for a few days or a couple of weeks, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. That's so that was the notification. Yeah, with it being, it, all he said is you'll go out there. I think initially, I think it was four or five days, and That's then. Right, yeah. Rightly so, if you qualified for the, um, or you're in the top three, you got through yeah. to the champion show. And then rather than yeah. fly us home, um, we stayed out there for a longer duration. But I think right. you, yourself will know, John, we had the an incident on the, where the TV cameras got pinched. Yeah. I think it was the same. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I think in total, I was out there for around about was either 14 or 17 days. In, it was in a long time, wasn't it? Because yeah. if you remember, our show... Um, we um because they couldn't get flights to get our show six out of there uh episodes are not meant to uh, contestants are not meant to overlap each yes. other but because yes. there was a delay with us that's why we met all of you in the hotel as we were checking out you were all checking in okay. yeah that's right yeah i do remember that of course we didn't because there was like 20 of us i don't think we got to sort of properly chat at that point no i don't think johnny as i say there's quite a few obviously tw two groups of 20 and then yeah the, i think the, the production crew tried the best to try and keep you apart sort of yeah. sort of thing yeah i know yeah because I, I remember they were screaming at me they said john don't give any results away okay you're not allowed to say anything it was like one of them it was, it was like chinese whispers after a while you'd say oh that's the winner over there that's the winner or that these you know, place, yeah. I, I gotta tell you um uh, you know charlotte and ricardo yes yeah, yeah. uh charlotte came up to me uh, and asked me um asked me a couple of questions and she said am i right you won the show and i went well I, i'm not allowed to say anything so she, no no she I, one of the other girls told me i, I know it's you <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, no I, I i was under orders to keep my mouth shut and yeah uh, other people blabbed but yeah i suppose with, with being new to tv like you say yeah you didn't know how much it would it would um it would go against you if you did do something so yeah. everybody well, for me it was by the book yeah uh, yeah i do you know i was petrified of going against what they said in case they could, like throw me off set or whatever. Yeah, I was like, right, you're exactly. yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what was it? Okay, so from applying, what was your impression seeing it on TV? You said it was a great laugh. Did you think that, oh, this is easy, I could do it? Or were you sort of thinking, I don't know, what, what was your expectations? <laughs> I, I saw so staying on the show, John, I'm always, I've been a quite a confident person, especially with physical ability. Yeah. And viewing that, it was something that not only looked really fun, but like I say, I, I used to, I was very agile and very athletic. So for me, yeah. it would be, I thought I'd have a high chance of doing well on the show. Yeah, so yeah. it was a bit of both to be fair. It looked very fun. Um, I didn't yeah. realise at the time that it was in Argentina. So that was, uh, oh, that was really? a big positive when I, when I yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I thought they'd just got a bit of sun in Liverpool. and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah it's a slight upgrade from that, wasn't it? <laughs> Mind you, oh my goodness, me, that flight out there, that felt like forever. That is the, still to this day the longest flight I've ever done. Yeah, same for them. Oh, no, yeah. sorry, I've been to Australia, but yeah, in terms oh, of... Uh, okay. Yeah, the yeah. sort of lengthy flight that John it was, especially Ooh. when you, you rocked up with them, met 20 people that you didn't know in the airport, and it was a yeah. case of, right, you're on the flight with them. It was like, hello, everybody. Yeah. I know. That, that's just right. It was almost like that flight gives you a chance to just to sort of get to know everyone. So once yeah. you were there, it's you're a bit more... Yeah. But to be fair, the contestants on my show and all the ones that I met, everybody was... A, it was a great crowd. Yeah. yeah. Really, really gelled well, yeah. Yeah, no, no, we, we found the same. They're pretty good at picking people that are going to work, you know, that bounce yeah. off each other well. So, no, no. Well, like yourself, John, I mean, I've, I've been on and off in discussions for you ever since, total wipeout, like I'm just having to catch up every now and then. Yeah, yeah. well, it, it, you know, this is what I've really liked about it is that, you know, loads of us have stayed in touch after all these yeah. years. So we really have sort of like lifelong friends, uh, friendship yeah. made from it. So, uh, no, it's, it's, it's good like that. So um, I'll tell you what, so... People who know you will know your time on the show, but should we just go to a clip just to uh, serve as a bit of a refresher and then we'll get into some uh, some questions. Oh, very quickly, what was your impression? Actually, you know, when we first drove onto set, you know, they get the coach from the hotel down. Yes. When you first saw the set, what was the first thought that went, went through your mind? Seeing it. <laughs> It was hard, John. Obviously, you could see there was two sets as well because you could see the Americans set in yeah. the, over in the distance as well. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It was quite... well. It's just surreal, to be fair, to it see was, it on the yeah. TV now when you see it in real person. It's totally different. Like, yeah. But I suppose different. on the back of that, they let you see the set, but they try to restrict you at the same time. Um, yeah. It's like when we're, on the, when we're doing the challenges, like I say, we'll probably go into that later, but it, yeah. they try to restrict 
uh, what you see, I think. Yeah, oh, yeah, they, they were petrified of us. In case you get an advantage, yeah. yeah. I know. Uh, oh, I, I got told off all the time. If you they caught us watching the other set, any action, you know, anything in action, yeah. the sweeper or whatever, sort of like, don't oh, get away, get away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, on that note, let's... Oh, let's... This is 22-year-old industrial radiographer and part-time boxer, Chris. Oh, this is a very fast time. Chris charges at the balls. One, two, three. Oh, what happened then? He lost his shoe. Things, Chris. Onto the balls. Here we go. Yeah. Oh. Ah! Just the lunar landing to go for a perfect run then. Oh! But his time of 1.21 is the fastest qualifier we've seen all series. He's so happy he's crying, look. Yeah, I, th I think that's why he's crying. Chris, last man standing, fastest in the qualifier, the man to beat. He is surely just not human. But well, we have the final five, so it's back to the action. Just... Jack's not! <laughs> oh! oh! Here we go again, I can't keep up. James, knockout Chris flips and takes out return of the headband, Dan. And I think that might be the best pilot we've ever seen on Total Wipeout. It's probably worse now they know what to expect. Here we go. First off the mark is knockout Chris. If it stops, nobody knows. Oh, it has. Right, good. And they're off. Knockout Chris living up to his name. <laughs> Chris would have been rubbish on play school. Should we go to the square window? No, we'll just headbutt the wall instead. And he's across by sheer determination. Tonight will be the closest final that Total Wipeout has ever seen. Smooth jump onto the spinner. Chris is making this look easy. Oh, and a perfect landing. It's like he's done this before, which, well, he has. If these next two leaps be the leaps of a champion, well, that certainly looked like them. That was, well, an impressive finish for Chris in a staggering time. That was good, John. Well done, well done. Was... <laughs> Some memories back there. I've tears in my eyes. Huh? <laughs> Do you know what? That last bit of you doing the trampolines, I just remember those of us sat, um, you know, sort of watching you doing it, all of us were absolutely just jaw on the floor because at that point we'd not had a chance to watch anyone do it. So this yeah. was my first chance to actually see people doing it. And I just like, I remember seeing the trampolines thinking, I've got to just go careful on these one at a time. And then yeah. I see you just fly it. I was just like... <laughs> that's why he's in the final yeah <laughs> yeah when you look at the when you see the different episodes and you say how people approach it quite often the, the, the process was to jump on one pause yeah. get on to yeah. the next one yeah. yeah 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 that was my thought because i was afraid that if i fell off the trampoline i was gonna have to swim back and you know sort of go again so yeah. uh, I, I suppose really before because typically after watching the clip i you know i got loads of questions what to ask you it's probably best we go to the fan questions because there's so many of them and it's yeah. better we cover those and then we uh, we expand on it from there. So. Yeah, good stuff. Okay, so what I'll have to do, back onto share screen again. Uh, I'm going to learn to get quicker at this one day. But, um, yeah, so it's going to load up in a second now. So you can see those, yeah? Yeah. Got them. Okay, we'll start with the first one. Was that Super Ninja Jake 2? So it goes for Chris. What was it like watching everyone's reaction to your insane ball crossing? Yeah, so for me, the ball crossing, let's say it was, it was actually, I'll go back to the very start. So okay. on the evening of the, actually, when I actually did the ball crossing, John, we went out on the, on the night um, yeah. with the team because the, yeah. the cameras got pinched for the second day. Oh, of course. Yeah, um, that's right. Yeah. Um, so we went out as a group on the night time with some of the production crew and he said, yeah. today, Chris, we thought your room was going to be pretty special. So we, we did a, like a, a video on the side, like personal video, we recorded it. And they showed us on the night and it was, that was the first time we'd got to see it. But um, And it obviously blew my mind seeing it because when you do it, it happens yeah. that quick. You just yeah. you don't realise what you've done. Um, and then to do it, when you watch previous episodes, people jump onto one again, get up, jump onto the next. So to yeah. cross them in such a fluent path like that, it was, it was really good to watch. And like you say, I suppose if that question is related to everyone at the set, then it'd be complicated because the guys at the set did, like you just mentioned previously, you don't get to watch the other contestants. Yeah. Yeah. So the, as soon as you've done your qualify, you're pushed into a, in, out the way and the next next guys go. But uh, 
in terms of when everybody from the, our team saw it on that night, I think everybody was a bit uh, jaw on the floor, including myself. It was it was yeah. really impressive. Yeah, well, because because uh, I know the one question we all asked was that is there any way they could just send us our own personal sort of footage so yeah. we could watch it? And they said no. Whatever you see on TV, that's it. But yeah. for you to have yours recorded additionally by them, I says, yeah. well, do you know what? I was out at that meal. We must have been sat at different parts of the table. I don't think they showed it around everyone because I, for some reason, I think if yeah. I seen that i would have remembered it but i don't yeah. remember that so it must have just been you and a couple others got it maybe it was john yeah maybe, maybe it was me gary and adam from out yeah oh you know yeah it could well have been yeah maybe they kept it kept it to those in your show yeah so, but yeah it was pretty pretty cool yeah, yeah. pretty cool thing i, I don't yeah. know whether there was a lot of luck involved but <laughs> <laughs> uh, based on everything else you did on the show i wouldn't say it was like it seemed to be more skill it was just your <laughs> determination I don't know. Yeah. It just felt like you were so much more fired up in the champ show um, yeah. because of what happened. Because by right, you should have won the first show. It was just unfortunate. Just a couple of little mistakes. Yeah, that, 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 I, I, for people who don't watch the show, like when back at home, when people watch that first episode, and they're like, "Why didn't you just get up and run on the on the the, the barrel ramp?" And I was yeah. like, "It was covered in like an inch of grease, and oh, with yeah. us being quite light, and I just I, I, I struggled to I just couldn't get my foot in it. I think I don't know yeah. it was a weight thing or what it was, but yeah, the second time round I got it, but the first time it just uh, cost me cost me vital yeah. time. That it did, yeah. Well, I suppose yeah, it's. Um, uh, James said this in his uh, interview back in the summer, and he said he wasn't aware of how many things were covered in grease. Yeah, it's, just a ridiculous yeah, amount. <laughs> uh, I, yeah. You know, there was one TV show, one of these review shows that were taking the mickey out of ours, and and they were saying they described it as a human mouse trap. Yeah, and I, I suppose yeah. that's. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's a, that's a good uh, yeah. a good example to be fair, John. I think I think at the time as well, I think I took some pretty. I do quite a bit of fell running, um, and I think I took some fell shoes out with us. But everybody gets a set of just uh, neoprene like diving sh shoes, and that's they've got it. no grip at all, so it's horrendous. No. Yeah, because no. yeah, yeah. I remember with me, I took some different shoes. I just bought some like wet shoes that they were. It was like from yeah. Sports Direct. It was like four pounds. Uh, yeah. I, I just felt trainers, I'd slip around too much. So I, I use those for a bit. But yeah, for the wipeout zone, they gave us other. That's right. For the wipeout zone, they give you their own. Yes, shoes, you get they? your own. Yeah. So yeah. everybody's got the same kit on, really. Yes. Yeah. So nobody's it, got an advantage. Yeah. You've reminded me. Yeah. Because I asked if I could use my own. And they said, no, you've got to use the ones we've given you now. So, okay. Yeah. But uh, all right. Next one uh, from the founder gaming. Uh, how was your wipeout experience? And would you ever do it again if the show was still going up one well, or if it ever comes back? Oh, with the wipeout experience. To be honest, John, it was probably one of the or one, or if not one of the best, or the best experience that I've ever encountered. It was just the, the way it was handled by the BBC, and um, the way the, the show was rolled out, the way we were looked after. It was what a brilliant experience. Um, yeah. I, I would fully recommend it to anybody if it ever came again. And would I do it again? I could honestly say, even if the BBC came and said. We're, we're doing the show, but we've got no prize money, I would be there in a flash. Yeah. What, what a it was a brilliant thing to do, and I would, I would love to do it again. I really would, yeah. yeah. But no, because I do wonder, it, there's a chance it might happen, because did you hear that America rebooted their series about two Yes, years yeah, ago? I, yeah, I had saw that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, John Cena was doing it. I mean, I don't know if it's still going. They've definitely done two series of it, I think. But um, well, They seem to do a, a rake of series in America compared to the UK. They did a, a hell of a lot more, I think. Yeah, it ran for so much. It ran till about 2014, whereas ours ended in like, 20, well, the last one they filmed was ended 2011. Yeah. Um, and then they aired it like a year later but uh, yeah if it came out uh, if it came back it'd be good i get the feeling that it will probably be filmed in the uk this time rather than okay. flying out abroad i, I don't know it's I, I, there's not as much traveling around these days is there <laughs> into, no I, I, I thought it was due to say like health health and safety restrictions that it was it was filmed in argentina but whether that was the case I don't no, know. okay apparently um, they was because it was a British show. They were bound by the same UK health and safety restrictions out in Argentina than they oh, were. All right, okay, so that was regardless. Was, then, yeah. uh, apparently, because it was about thirty countries using it, it was yeah. cheaper to have one course rather than built in yeah. thirty courses around the world. Yeah, some central reason, location. Fine amount was going to be less than uh, the course uh, allegedly. Oh. I mean, that's that's what yeah. I read about it. So who knows if Wikipedia is correct or not? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that place. Yeah, yeah. So always accurate sort of uh, news from there. Right. Uh, next ones. Uh, tight rope. This is from uh, Merrick Goyette. I think that's his name. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry if I've pronounced the name wrong. Okay, for Chris, which set of the tight rope terror did you fail, or did you fall off both of them? And obviously, yet another one. How did it feel running across the the red ball? So yeah, the tight yeah. rope. We never we never saw that. 
Yeah, you didn't say it on my episode. So I remember we did uh, we do it. So before you do the actual qualifying, you all walk through with the health and safety guy, and he tells you the rules at the same time. So yeah. the rule for the tightrope with Terra was that you had to touch the rope at the start yeah. of each stage. So I think there was the central podium, start podium, central podium, and the uh, finish podium. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, so as soon as I saw it, I heard the guys talking about a number of ways that they were going to approach it. But for me, I always thought and it was all about time. Um, yeah. So for me when I hit the tightrope, it was a case of I touched the rope with my foot and then I jumped as far as I could. And I think the first time round, I managed to land on the central podium, so I missed the mud altogether. Oh, wow, then, okay. Yeah. yeah. And then second one, because I didn't have the run-up that I did on the first, uh, for the first clearance, yeah. that's when I got absolutely caked in mud, but it was right, the yeah. same kind of approach. But I only landed in, the, say, the final metre of it. But yeah, right. so my tightrope terror, but it was, yeah, I did fail, but it was a case of I failed on purpose because I wasn't, I, did, I didn't want to waste time on yeah. the rope. Because I do remember before a couple of, it may have been Andy that talked about it and he said he was going to try and sort of scale upside down, sort of Spider Man sort of thing, which yeah. is, yeah, you stay out of the mud, but then I was wondering, <laughs> yeah, five minutes time later. Factor. And then I also thought, if you're upside down, how do you get yourself on the podium when you're facing the wrong way? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I thought the same as you, it was about time. What what I did find is when I hit the mud, it covered half my face, so I lost one eye effectively. <laughs> That mud was seriously thick and deep. It was uh, brutal. I'm sure they made it worse for our series, and then they watered it down for future series. And I don't, I don't think some people realise that the water. I think it was like 16 feet deep when I asked one of the guys because they had divers in there as well. It was ridiculously really? deep. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, I didn't know it was that deep. Yeah, I, I don't know if it was all the course, but definitely where the red balls were, John. It was seriously deep. Yeah. Blimey. Yeah. Of course, I know those flotation jacks. When you hit the water. Even if you yeah. go under, it pushes you up pretty rapidly, doesn't it? Yeah, so, it does. Yeah. Now, of course, uh, I've just thought of another uh, question with this. Okay, your first run, were you, were you completely covered in mud on your first run? You weren't as muddy on the first time, were you, compared to the second? So the first episode, John? Uh, what, the first episode? Because what I'm thinking, when you cleared the balls, you were actually yeah. caked in mud while doing that. I mean, did it make yes. the balls more slippy being covered in mud? No, to be fair, I think with the, the, the speed that I was going up, John, and it yeah. was, um, yeah, I had both trainers on that time, so it was... It <laughs> that <laughs> helped. Yeah. I think for the fraction of time that you're on the balls, it didn't make much difference, to yeah. be fair, John. Yeah. I think for you, it just seemed like forward momentum was the yeah. sort of factor in that it was driving you forward. So, yeah, definitely. All right. Uh, uh, sec- yeah, go on. Sec- second part of that is how do you feel running across the big red balls? It was, oh, yeah. like I say, I mean, the only... Br- memory I have of it is landing on the fourth ball and being in the air just about to land onto the pontoon or the, yeah. the final, like uh, the, the hard stand right. and thinking, and that, that was a, like I said, it was a true reaction. I was like, yeah, because I just realised <laughs> then what I've done. <laughs> so I like, get in! <laughs> I tried to obviously do the same approach the first time round on the series, uh, episode seven, but yeah. it, I, I fell, um, I think it was on the third ball and hit the fourth ball and that yeah. one, the momentum went all the way, but yeah, yeah. it was a yeah, great feeling. Yeah, Didn't really sink in until later. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, what you did is what we all dream of. And, of course, didn't they say to us in the, the tent before we all did the qualifier, they said, could someone please just run the balls? Because they said, <laughs> we've had more crossings this season, but everyone's doing it one at a time. We yeah. really want to yeah. see someone run at it. Yeah. And I suppose yeah, that was, that's true. Yeah. And they'd already, you'd already tried that once anyway. So you, yeah. I suppose in your mind, you were going to go for that, that method again. Yeah. Yeah. So... <laughs> Okay, next one from, I think it's Bram, uh, Bram Bats. I think it's his, Bram, yeah. uh, Om uh, Bram Bat. Okay, how does it feel like losing in the wipeout zone by one second? I almost hate Hard. asking this question. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I still, I still don't sleep on a night because of it, John. It's, no, the, um, so yeah, I think if it had been a minute, 10 seconds, whatever, it, mm. it would have been more comfortable. But for one second, I mean, oh. th- that, was, that was a big hit. It really was. And, to, to, to I think to the point I even asked at the end of the um, at the end of, on the night when it said one seconds and we went back to stage and I said just to clarify obviously one second is a click of the fingers and I said yeah. how, how do you how do you guarantee that I lost by one second like how yeah. do you know it wasn't a draw for example yeah. and what it is what it aspired to be that there was this three independent people time and time in the um, the event. So the and the overall time that was taken, or the the, the comparison of the three, it was not point four two of a second that James oh. actually won by. So it was less. It was less than half a second. Yeah, not point four two. I yeah. thought I'd heard somewhere afterwards that it was less than a second. Yeah. 
but uh, do you know what? Until you said, I never realised it was three different people that were doing the timing. Yeah, because yeah, three independent is... timers. Yeah. yeah, right. Because that which makes so... sense because, like you say, if one guy's a bit slow at pushing the button, or for example, yeah. and you're down to like a second, like ours was, then yeah, yeah. make a difference. Yeah. Because I know some of us also wondered when they start the klaxon at the top of the the wipeout zone. You're in that sort of donut. It's yeah. the person who pushes you off. They've got to react to that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're a bit yeah. slow on that reaction. That could add more on to your... Yeah, it could time. be an accumulation of a few things, yeah. to be fair, John. Then, yeah. So, because um, there is there is a video on there, the one channel, uh, Total Wipeout Spotlight. They did, they tried to, they did on a split screen, they did both of your wipeout zones together to try oh, and see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll have to send you the link, or maybe in this video, I'll see if I can post a link to that um that clip because he's the guy who runs it he's uh, he's got a question coming up as well but yeah he did a split screen comparison of both of your runs and yeah. i think what happened james had moved slightly ahead but it, james was a bit slower on the trampolines and then you pulled the time back i think i think at one point you were like oh, maybe yeah. two seconds if the if the timer that you see on screen is correct yeah, then yeah. it seemed like you may have been about one and a half two seconds behind but you were faster on the trampolines, which suddenly brought you closer to his level. Yeah. Um, oh, see, I didn't know. Then, yeah. it, that's assuming that the, the time the show on screen is accurate, because there are a few of us wonder when we hit the water and then we go to the next obstacle, there seems to be a lot of time that elapses on occasions. And you know, we, <laughs> we were never sure about that. The finish yeah, time was accurate, but um, yeah. you know, yeah. the joys of TV editing. Um, right. And the next one, oh, we've already covered it. How did you pull down the tightrope of terror? Well, we, we covered that a moment ago. So, right, next one, uh, Finster TV. How were you able to jump across the big red balls the way you did in the champ show? Yeah, so for, so, with these questions. Yes, so I, I think, yeah, if I, I'm going to say a bit of luck and, yeah. and a bit of just determination. I think just pure flat out. I didn't think about it too much, to be fair, John. I just thought I'd go for it and just not to say some people spend too much. It was all about time. And some people wasted yeah. too much time thinking or hesitant. So yeah. it's just a case of flat out and go for it. So a bit of skill and a bit of luck, I think, would probably be the best. Uh, the you best, know, I uh, do I feel, I, I think from my experience of looking at other people, I think your mindset going into each of the events was crucial because if your mindset is slightly negative, that's going to reflect itself on the, the course. But if you're much more sort of positive and sort of like determined as well, yeah, chances are you're going to do better. It's funny as well because just before that ball crossing, when I started the qualifier, I had two two options in my head. The first option was to run as fast as I could. I was pretty quick at sprinting and, and jump yeah. and try and land on the third ball, but I saw so many people had tried that and failed. So I thought, yeah. stuff it, I'll just hit it when I go for it, and that'll say that's why I did like more of a skip, yeah. a skip um, process to try and get across them. Yeah, well, it worked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And obviously, Stephen, the, the cookie lover, you can see most of these questions. Yeah. Everyone, I mean, that for me, that well, for everyone, that was like your iconic moment. Yeah. So I think I think if I'm correct, John, at the time, nobody had ever crossed the balls in that way. Uh, no, you were the first. That's the thing. You were the first person to, to run them like that. Everyone was just one at a time or yeah. they would maybe run the first two and then do the last couple. It was no one had done it yeah. like, like you. And I'm not even sure if it had happened in any other countries at that point. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> so it. Uh, yeah, you definitely, you, you broke some ground there, that's for sure. So, um, okay, you can see the next question, Stephen, the yep. cookie lover. We've the same, I think, yeah. it. How did it feel to just run across the red balls? We've, we've effectively covered it. So, Steve, I hope you don't mind. You've sort of had that question answered already. Okay, uh, next one's Alfie Naylor. Honest to God, watching those wipeout zone runs still tortures me to this day. I was just rooting for Chris to have that clean sweep and hopefully that happy ending. So in the original show, it only got easier when I found out Adam was local to me because then at least I could say someone local won on, on Wi-Fi. <laughs> oh, so it's not really a question. It's just, he's just sort of saying that he was... It's Well, I, I feel the pain as well with you on that, Alfie. So thanks yeah. very much for that comment, yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, do you know what? It was, I think it was a bit heartbreaking for us watching as well because for you to perform at that level and to just miss out the chance of being, you know, winner by that fraction was... Yeah. We were all genuinely gutted for you out there. It was no, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you guys were very welcome when, when when they did lose. I mean, it's always good to be a bit sportsmanship, um, but uh, yeah, it's still like I say, it was it was it was good of you guys to uh, to embrace everybody. I think yeah. yeah. So right, okay. Uh, what have we got next? Oh, Sam Hemingway. That Sam put another question at the last minute because obviously he asked if yeah. Uh, we'll we'll cover the first one. So he goes, right, yeah. for Dizzy Dummies, if you missed the last jump, 
but touched the pontoon, were you allowed to pull yourself up no matter how deep in the water you were? Yeah. Or were there specific rules about that? Because I noticed you did that on the donuts, but they still allowed it. Yeah, it's good yeah so on this one. So again, what you don't see on this, Sam, is um, in terms of how long this actual run went on for, I think on the screen, it's like I say, it's a few attempts. But realistically, I think we were going at this for a good five, ten minutes. Yeah, <laughs> it was. I remember it was a long, long time. Yeah. It was, and they were absolutely smothering. That final one was smothered in grease, I think it was. So it was again, it, it's hard to um, to see that on the camera. But yeah, for in terms of that actual rule, so we were told it was anything from the waist above, um, then you should continue. He said if it if it was in doubt, the, there was always a referee on standby. So if he didn't like it, he would blow a whistle and then it would be back to the start. Right. So okay. So when I jumped onto that pontoon, I'd landed at waist deep and. I hadn't heard the whistle, so I continued and they acknowledged it as a win. So, yeah, so right. if, if it had been against the rules, I should I would have been told and I would have yeah. swam back to the start, yeah. Do you know, yeah. what What you've said, it's interesting because I've noticed on Ninja Warrior, on this latest series, one of the rules were you could touch the water uh, yeah. on an obstacle as long as one... Uh, as one as long as one of your limbs was out of the water, you were classified as still in. It's only if all four yeah. limbs went in, then you uh, you were eliminated. So yeah, well, that's good because that makes it not as harsh, to be fair, because they say some, yeah. some people, the leg will touch it by mistake and then it's yeah. a case of, oh, you're out. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, no, I, do you know, I, I remember reading the briefings for all the rules. I couldn't remember what the ruling was on that because, uh, well, I never got to play this one afterwards. So, um, yeah, yeah. Um, but that... But that's in terms of, I don't know if there's any further questions about Dizzy Dummies, but uh, that Dizzy Dummies is the, probably the worst experience of my life. The spinning, I remember that, so we did that on the morning, I think it was. Um, yeah, the morning of the second day. And then even by the tea time on that evening, yeah. I, I remember sat in the hut with everybody for food and I stumbled to the side and there was, I was like, whoa, are you okay? And I was like, honest, yeah. it just threw my um, equilibrium or just balance was off for the yeah. whole day. <laughs> well, uh, do, you, do you know what? I, I remember, because obviously I never got to do it first time around. Of course, you had to do it twice, didn't you? Yeah, twice, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So what you, what you don't see on the, on the champ show is, because we were hoping for the dread mill but the, the the production team were like is everybody ready with the klaxon and everyone was just like yeah. i even seriously completed thinking I, I might just say i'm look I, i've had enough yeah. I don't like it, because it, it was horrendous the speed of it was unreal but like yeah when the production team shouted are you ready everyone was like just like no don't no. want to do it and they're like come on we'll have to try yeah. again yeah, yeah. mind you it, it do you think it's one of those things where in your mind you think like i don't want to go through with this but let's say that you did just step out of it, you would have regretted it massively. Oh, you? massively, John. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I would, I would, I would never, uh, I would never forgive myself if I'd walked out no. on it. Um, no. And I think, to be fair, when you watch the episodes and you look at the way I handled it, like my friend said when when we watched it back home, he's like, "How did you did it not make you dizzy?" He said, "Because as soon as you unclip, you were away." But yeah, you were. Yeah, I, it was crazy. But I think, that, like I say, it, it took a few seconds before the dizziness hit you. Like, hence why I had the first obstacle. And I remember jumping on like the mushroom stools and thinking, "Whoa!" You can sort of know where your orientation is, but it's still, like I said, just throw you a bit. But yeah, yeah, awful, awful obstacle. <laughs> Uh, I, I'll take your word for it. It looked horrendous watching it because yeah. I was thinking like they're spinning really, really fast. Yeah. With like, me, with me being a runner, I'm doing a lot of running outside of yeah. um, like as a sport. I, I was hoping for treadmill, but we never never got yeah, to see. You know, it. I I was the same as you. I wanted treadmill badly, and you know the worst thing is if it was treadmill, it would have been six people through, not five. Oh, I would have made yeah. the cut. I, yeah. I, I would have got in because I, I missed it by one. Uh, you know, oh well. Again, that haunts me as well that I missed the <laughs> round by one spot. Although yeah. when I saw how sick and how dizzy all you felt, I thought, yeah, maybe I uh, dodged a bullet <laughs> on that one. <laughs> so it was. Uh, do you know what? Uh, on a little side note, I think something that was discussed amongst a few of us after the first round, because like we'd only met you and James and all the others, you know, yeah. first time, you know, out there after that qualifier. A few admitted afterward, it was becoming blatantly obvious that those of us from the first six episodes that, that went out, it really was a case of it was going to be you and James and someone amongst us lot that was going to make up that final spot. Yeah, everyone, oh. yeah that was the view of everyone who thought it's so you two were just on another level, and it was yeah. just who else was going to join them in the final. You know that. Really, oh. That that was kind of the attitude. So well, on the first obstacle on that dizzy dummies, my thought was get away before James and hit because it was like the tipping tables. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So when I got onto that tipping table, if you notice, James, if I had set away quicker, James would have missed the start, so he would have been having to wait oh, for yeah, the table he to, would have had to have waited. Yeah. I thought straight away if I if I 
proceed on this tipping ramp and James gets on the front, it's going to knock me off the other side. So that's why I waited for James to get on board and let him go first because it was, yes, I would have come second on that obstacle by waiting, but it was the case of securing that I got through rather than... In a way. And, yeah. And before that, before that obstacle, we were told the last time that, that actual tipping table obstacle had been on Total Wipeout, they had to call it a day. Um, and I, I think they had to do something else. Or they, had to, they had to do something on it, John, because they, they took the, the guys that long to get across it. Well, we were over it in a second, yeah. Wow. I, I, I just remember that was blistering that game because I think you all, yeah. you and James went first and then the others, yeah. um, you know, Dan, Dan, Claire and, uh, no, Jack, Dan and Claire, they yeah. all did it on their first attempt as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it was a surprise to the guys as well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was, well, from, from our viewpoint, it looked like the whole game was over in 30 seconds. That was, that was just like yeah. blink, blink and you missed it. So uh, I felt for Claire on that ruling afterwards. Yeah, we, bless her. Yeah. We all, all of us watching it, we thought, oh, Dan's out because he was at, yeah. at the back of it. And yeah, uh, yeah. anyway, that, that's a conversation for another day. Right, Sam's second question, which came in literally this morning. So I don't know if the interview has been done already, but I thought of another question. What was it like doing the qualifier without a shoe? <laughs> <laughs> so to, to, to be fair, Sam, I didn't really. I, obviously, I knew the trainer. Had, uh, I'd lost it on the on the balls, but um, it, 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 for the the amount of the obstacles that was left on on that uh, on the qualifier, it didn't really impact us. To be fair, yeah. um, if anything, it probably gave us more grip because the bloody shoes were caked in mud. But I, I did actually ask at the end of that. I said, "Oh, is there any chance of getting me trainer back?" And they said, "No." So I said, "I never, never ever got that trainer back." Well, and it was even the though it only of... went in the water, they didn't fish it out for you. That's what she said. The divers are out the pool now, and basically it was a sixteen foot deep pool. So sorry, Chris, you, you've lost your shoe. No. <laughs> but crazily enough, there's there was an abundance of uh, one legged homeless people in Buenos Aires. So the trainer, <laughs> that I had left, the trainer that I gave left, I gave to a homeless guy near the hotel. <laughs> oh, really? You actually gave the other one away. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Um. Because I remember hearing stories of loads of shoes being lost in the mud pits, and they yeah. said that the bottom of the mud pit is absolutely there is loads of trainers there. Yeah, I can believe I, that. I was about to ask you. I always assumed that because you lost it on the balls, it was in the water. I thought they'd fish it out for you. No, I never got it. Yeah, I had a duplicate set of trainers. Like I had two pairs of those trainers. So oh. for the next round, I just had to wear yeah. my new other set of trainers. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know? You've got me thinking. I did. I take two pairs. All I took, I had one pair of wet shoes and a pair of trainers. That was it. Yeah. God, if I'd lost one of those, I would have been done for. <laughs> <laughs> Blimey. Right. I've got a feeling the next question is... Oh, no, no. Oh, no, we have got another one. Total Wipeout Spotlight. Oh, this is the channel. If you go to this channel, Total Wipeout Spotlight, he is the one yeah. that has done a side-by-side -side comparison. Oh, OK. That's good you to know. You and James. Well, thank right. you, Total Wipeout Spotlight. I'll have a look at that, yeah. Okay, yeah, he also, he's done lists of, like, his top 100 contenders, top 150. Yeah. Uh, you're always in the top five on his list. Oh. So, yeah. Um, so, let's let's go through these bit with it. How were you able to do the barrel run uh, so much better the second time round? Start with that. Yeah, so for the first time round, I didn't know that there was grease on there. Um, and it was a case of, I think... I, I didn't get the momentum at the start of the ramp to get myself up it um, and the grease just affected me massively. So my, my plan for the second time round was make sure I get high up the ramp before before the barrels come down towards yeah. us. So if you notice, I get right, like I say, best part yeah. of most of the way up it before a barrel comes out. So it was just a better planning for the second time round. Um, yeah. The grease, I try to stand up rather than tilt forward um, just to put more weight in, you know, like disperse the weight rather than having a, like a small point of contact. Yeah, so it was right. yeah, a bit of planning. Got you. Okay, his next question. God, he's put a lot in here. Right. Did you feel confident going for the launch pad in two bounces in the champ show? Uh, or were you nervous you'd mess up? That's actually a good point because... Yeah. yeah. The first time round, yeah, I messed it up. So back at home, I was a keen keen on, um, on the trampolines. I was a, a, oh, where right. I at home, so I was practising quite a bit. Uh, obviously not knowing that that was going to be on the show, but it was just something that I did as a, yeah. as for a hobby or fun. Um, so... Yeah, the, the plan was always to hit it in two bounces. Um, and it was just, it was my error on the first time round on episode seven that it went wrong. So, yeah, I was confident on the second time that I would try the same approach and thankfully it paid off, yeah. But you can see how much time you gain by just doing that that, that quick Good. move, yeah. Do you know what? Because I was thinking you did it, um, those two trampolines and hitting the buzzer at the end, I think you did it in like four seconds. Yeah. With me, doing them one at a time, it took me like 17 seconds. So, I mean, so that's the difference of doing them one at a time versus straight off. Two so, seconds, John. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, go for it. John, I'll give you a call back in two minutes. That's all right, Paul. 
Um, yeah, do you want to pause it for a second, yeah? Yeah, please pause okay, it. Okay, yeah. right, we're, we're back after a brief intermission. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, uh, this used oh, to happen you. at the cinema. They used to break the film yeah. up into two parts, so uh, the same the same's happening here. Right, the, the follow-on from that uh, question from Total Wipeout Spotlight, we talked about the launch pads. Okay, the final part was after you crossed the big red balls and fell off the lunar landing, it yeah. showed that it took you 25 more seconds to get back on the platform, even though it looked like a short swim. And <laughs> said, there's been some controversy about this. So personally, I think the times have been tampered with since I know you've recovered very quickly at other points. If you recall, would you say it, was, it wasn't It was quite 25 seconds, maybe more like 10 seconds? Uh, no, I think... So just to give you a bit of background on that, which you don't see in the episode, is yeah. when I went down the rope and that not hit in a, certain areas and caused an excruciating amount of pain. So yeah. when I came up out of that water, I was screaming at the top of my voice yeah. uh, in cursing words. Yeah. And um, I don't think, obviously, the TV crew hadn't realised what I'd done at the time. And I remember in my head, I was just lying in the water screaming, and then a few five, ten seconds had gone by, and I thought, crackers, I've got to get onto that pontoon for them to yeah. stop the timer. So so I would probably say the 20 seconds is probably realistic, to be fair. Yeah. So what you obviously don't see as well, when I'm bent over, <laughs> trying to cheer, but in <laughs> agony at the same time. So yeah. straight after that, I got put in the ambulance, and um, I'd sustained a bit of uh, rope burn in certain areas, and I had to get um, two of the Argentinian nurses put me some, I think it was the equivalent of germline on there, or blister in there. Oh. I had some quite extensive blisters down the side, and uh, so oh. that was on the evening. And then again for the the champion show, I had to get the cream on again just because I was in and out of water. It was getting wet just to try. And so, so I actually, I did it in a minute and 11 seconds injured, if you were, I was compromised. Oh my goodness <laughs> me. No, because um, I, I've got to ask, that's, you know, that that bit where you, you know, with the, well, they call it the lunar line, that little yeah. podium sort of thing. When you slip from that, of course, they have not about four or five different knots on the rope. Did I see? Knots as well, John. Yeah. Did you yeah. land dead weight on one of the knots just before you hit yeah. the water? So they are basically so I fell down and then the, the final knot or the one from the second from the bottom is that it's quite hefty, they're quite big things, and that was yeah. that, that my full body. If you notice, the, the body weight sort of like you say fell dead weight on it, so that kind yeah. of pulled me for a second, and that was all. Oh. Me. <laughs> it oh. was painful. Yeah. Every man listening to this now and literally <laughs> crossing their legs and just sort of like just holding themselves a little closer. You know? That's why it was a true high pitched scream, yeah, yeah, when I was out that water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Manly scream that was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I would, I would definitely say I think the 20 seconds is probably realistic because I was in agony when I came yeah. out of that. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Of course, I, I, you're in sort of agony. Do you that? You probably, for a, did you for a brief moment forget where you were at because all you could think yeah. about was the pain? Because, yeah, Amanda was shouting to me, Chris, you've got to get to the pad. You've got to get to the right. pad. And I thought, yeah. crackers, I've got yeah, to get yeah. there. Otherwise, yeah. the time's just ticking away. Yeah. 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 But to be some, if I'd landed that landing, it would have been sub one minute. It would have been done. Yeah. But... Well, yeah. I mean, if that time was accurate, and I've got a feeling it is with the speed yeah. you did everything else, I mean, you were potentially going to land in like 55 seconds. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was insane. So, uh, yeah, because you'd already set the fastest time. Well, even with that fall, you still had the fastest time in the series. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So previously, episode seven, I got the fastest time. Mm. Then this monster of a athlete called James came along and took my record <laughs> in the next episode. And then I beat him again on, yeah. the, on, the, on the champion show. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and then, you know, and then he goes and uh, takes one second off you in the final. Yeah. <gasps> <laughs> fixed. Fixed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, do you know what? I, I caught up with him in the, the summer, you know, on the interview. It was such a blast catching up with him again. And yeah. it just He's a really good guy, to be fair. He is. He is. Yeah. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, do you know what? I think we're going to have to arrange a catch-up in person with a few of us again, aren't we? It's uh, Yeah, it would be good. John. Yeah. Well, we live in different parts of the country, so I know it's a bit it's a bit tricky, but we'll have to sort something out. All right, I'm going to go back on to share screen because the last question is actually from one of the champions from series three okay okay and let's load this up right okay here you can see the, these are all your notes uh, we'll just go oh. to this one now <laughs> okay by the power of chocolates <laughs> so here's a question from one chris to the legend that is knockout chris how the hell did you get across those balls so effortlessly and did you know you set the standard going forward with the producers telling everyone to try and emulate the knockout Chris technique. <laughs> that's, that's, that's good. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. yeah. So, 
just on that, John, the um, so obviously we've discussed the the, the, the crossing of the balls, a bit, mm. a bit of skill, a bit of determination, but yeah. um, in terms of so I was totally unaware that um, that was that, that video was so the groups coming out after all the series coming out and the, those groups were shown my video and said this is the standard. I was totally unaware of that until a few mm. years later when I, I did another TV show. Oh, um, okay. With, uh, uh, one of this uh, producers or scouts off the um, off the right. TV of Total Wipeout, yeah. and they said, "Oh, Chris, like I hadn't seen them for a good few years. Yeah. Um, did you realise that your ball crossing was like shown to every group that came out?" So I said, "It was years have gone by until I was aware of that." But yeah, it's pretty cool to know that. Oh, yeah, yeah, you need to that's, do it like this. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I mean, like we said, you were the first one to to run them like that. So you kind of like you set the standard, and I think it was in series four. Then a couple of other guys started to do it yes. as well, but. Um, yeah. Chances are, I bet you, one of these days we'll get to chat to some, and I bet you they probably were watching yours over and over to try and yeah. get do the same thing. Yeah. But, but yeah. no matter what happens uh, from there, you were the first. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks very much for that question, Chris. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah. So um, I, I suppose, of course, uh, I'm all right. We're going to have to be quick on this because your phone's running a bit low on battery life, isn't it? So, <laughs> My apologies, John. Yeah. That's okay. No, 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 no. no that's fine. Um, yeah. The award show, there was. Um, uh, you technically you won two awards within ten seconds of each other. <laughs> there they are. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Now, do you know what I've got to ask? With those awards, do they say your surname or does it say your your knockout, Chris? How, how... Uh, so it's Chris, uh, Chris Henderson. Yeah. It does say. All oh, right. Okay. In camera, but yeah, that's the. Yep. Um, yep I think we can see it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Special award. Total wipeout special award because this one's yeah. for best run on the balls, Chris Henderson. Yeah. 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 No, but yeah, they're 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 them. Uh, uh, prime display in the house. <laughs> Brilliant. Do you know it's interesting? It varies a bit because like yours got your surname, Donovan's yeah. is actually got on and on Donovan on his. I don't think it says ah, that right. Yeah, yeah, this is where, and I know with Rachel, hers says Rachel Bassford's. You know, it's yeah, so it you know, changed. So yeah. they do seem to alternate between whether it's your nickname or whether it's your own uh, whether it's your own name. Yeah. So uh, yeah. yeah, I look at these trophies with great envy because. <laughs> 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 even though the sweeper, the champs pilot, um, yeah. you know, even though that won the award, I rung them up and said, oh, does that mean, do I get a trophy from that? They said, no, we decided because there was like nine of you in the pilot. Um, we decided not to give out any. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I probably would have, I probably would have preferred winnings rather than trophies, John. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, actually, you, you've led to a good point because, um, and one of the questions, uh, you know, was talking about your, your happy ending and everything, because you said that in your shout out at yeah. the, uh, you know, the top of the course, and you know, I want my happy ending, and it was like it was so heartbreaking what happened to you in the first show of just yeah, yeah. out, and then it almost felt even more painful <laughs> of, of what happened. And like you said about winning money, now did that? Did you ever manage to win money afterwards? Yeah, I did. I did a few TV shows afterwards, John. To be fair, um, and I went on a, a game show called uh, Release the Hounds, which. Yeah. Uh, so it was pretty, a pretty scary one. I'm a pretty jumpy person and get scared yeah. fairly easy. But um, yeah, we won some. We won. There was three of us were contestants on that. It's a bit of a right. horror show, um, and we had yeah. we didn't have any idea of what the show involved. It was a case of chuck you in and you're right. in there now, guys. Deal yeah. with it. And um, a bit of a horror theme to it. And we won twelve thousand pound between three of us. So it was four thousand each. But, oh, yeah, it was. That's good got it. Got it. Got the happy ending. Ending yeah. eventually. Excellent. Yeah. I tell you, should we, if we've got enough battery life, should we go to a clip of it a second just to give yeah, people a little John, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. All right. <laughs> I'll run first. <laughs> Andrew's going to go for it, I'm going to stay. <laughs> Let out a little bit of weight. I think I've let out more than that, Ricky. Come on, James. Come on, Chris. Come on. Get up, get up. Come on. Come on. Look at that. Yeah, that's pretty. That, that's cool. But it's, it's a yeah, for that, those who haven't seen the show. Um, yeah. yeah, basically, you do challenges throughout the night and to gain a head start. And at the end of the night, whatever head start you've gained, they set a pack of dogs loose on you, who are trained to take people down. And oh, uh, they, is that what it is that you get more yeah. of a head start on the? So if you do badly, then you're effectively yes. the dogs are 
So it's, it's a 160 meter track. The right. quicker you do the challenge, as soon as the, you hear a chime at the start of the challenge in the night, and yeah. then that 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 time is uh, increasing all the time. Sorry, or decrease it increasing. Right. Or oh, sorry, it's decreasing the time, the distance of the dogs from you. Oh, um, right. So the quicker you do it, the better it is for you. So on my right. challenge, we had a, I think it was a 72 meter head start. Right. And I tried to calculate in my head, and I thought I'd need 70 meters to be fair. So I thought I'd be somewhere near, but uh, there was no right. stopping me that night. I think if, if, if they had Usain Bolt in a dog suit, you wouldn't have caught us. I don't think. Did, I'm trying to remember, did all three of you have to do that run, or did yes. they select all of you had no, to run? It? All three. So you do three challenges. And then every time someone does a challenge, then they leave the, they leave you in the wood. So right. first challenge, then there's two left in the wood. Then right. the second challenge, then there's one left in the wood. And uh, honest, John, that it was to know that in the back of your head, you know that you're never going to be in danger. But they, they really did get you in a position where you thought, yeah, like this is scary. This is yeah. scary. <laughs> It, yeah. it, watching it, it kind of made me think of like 28 days later. It's all, yeah, yeah, you're living yeah, in like a real life zombie. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> yeah well, it, was, it was truly was awful. I remember to the point you don't see it on camera, but at the end of the second challenge, when there was two of us left in the wood, and uh, they said, "Right, you need to decide who's going to go out at this round and take this head start, yeah. and who's going to stay in the wood." And it was like a good five minute conversation. I think my friend was in tears in the end and said, "Look, yeah. I just I can't be in this wood by myself." He yeah. said, "It's absolutely awful." I just said, "Right, I, you... I'll do it." Yeah. So yeah. did you go last of all and you had to wait there on yes. your own? Yeah, yeah, oh, no. yeah. And what it was, the in my challenge, I went in a like a this haunted um, ice cream van and there was a, a skull that was encased in ice. And inside that ice, the skull in its mouth was a key, right. which is what you needed to obtain to, to stop right. the clock. And they gave you some tiny little ice picks and I started chipping away and they bent and I thought, I'm going to be on forever here. So, yeah. oh, John, my power's going to go off in 30 seconds. Do you want to... I'll oh, try no. dialing on my other phone if that's all right. Okay, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll carry on in, in part three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cheers. So uh we're starting up now. This is technically part three because obviously you, what have you done? You've just switched cameras, haven't you? It switched phones, yeah. The battery's died on one button. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is quite funny now. I, I, it's quite interesting. What do you think? All the delays we've had previously, yeah. trying to get this done, either us going ill, uh, you know, internet yeah. connections going down, Zoom not working, and yeah. now the day we get to do it, it only made sense that we were going to have <laughs> other batteries running it's out. It, John, it's, it's just my bad luck continuing from the show. <laughs> just honest. I'm sure well, I'm cursed. Yeah. Uh, do you know what? At least you didn't have bad luck on this show, you know, because you actually, you know, you got some... You know, you obviously got yeah. some cash out of it. I know what I was going to ask you about it. Um, because I know that you do quite a... Have you, do you do athletics as well? Because you must be pretty quick on like 100 metres and sprinting like that. Have you ever done that sort of... So I, I do some track... Of, I do do some track events, John. Um, I saw, I suppose, I train on the track, but generally it's for, I don't know, 5Ks, 1 miles. I do a lot okay. of 1 miles and sprints. So yeah, right. my, my 100 metres time was, um, I think, the high 11.9 like was my best time. But I was always pretty quick on the yeah. track, yeah. I had a feeling you were rapid yeah. on that because, well, we saw it in Wipeout, but it was also the speed you were running. You yeah. know, on release the hounds, and of course you're doing that in full sort of like that's not running gear, is it? So, no, that was a that was a, a full leather jacket, and it was Kevlar lined jeans, and then we had like some form of like it was boots on. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty restrictive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So obviously we had no insight to what we were. They just said, "Oh, here's your outfit guy, put them on," and I was like, "Said Kevlar on the inside of the trousers," and I thought, well, what, <laughs> "Where are we going here? Yeah. What have I signed up for?" <laughs> yeah, but you survived. That that's amazing. Yeah. So. Um, very quick, am I right that you've done a couple other shows? That if we, oh, we haven't got any sort of more clips, but can you just briefly summarise? You have been on a couple other programmes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a few others, John. Yeah, I uh, did one with Ant and Deck, Red or Black, which was again about luck, and I didn't have much of it. So right. <laughs> that was it. Oh, no. was it. it all, I, all I had to do was pick Red or Black, and I still couldn't get that right. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but that was that was pretty cool. Um, it was um, say guess red or black and it was a, I think it was a one in eight chance of winning half a million pound on the night but um, oh. I, yeah I came out unlucky the girl on the night as well uh, thankfully she won the half a million pound so yeah really good I didn't realise yeah. there was that much money on the yeah. night yeah it was really, if, if, if you didn't win it on your episode it rolled over to the following episode so right. one guy won 1.5 million which was at the time was the biggest UK TV prize yeah yeah because it was who wants to be a millionaire that was the big headline up to that when yeah. someone won the million was it yeah I never knew there was that much money involved I vaguely yeah, a lot been watching it but yeah. I, I, it's you know, it's been such a long time. I didn't know there was that much money um, at hand. Yeah, it must be with it being ITV, big broadcaster. Yeah. yeah. So was that the show? Because you mentioned earlier about um, a few years later, you found out uh, on a show that um, your ball crossing was being shown to a future series to give them a, yeah. a reference. Was this the show that you found out about it on? Or 
think, I can't remember that it was, to be honest, John, I can't remember. I think it may have been red or black. I think it was. Yeah. Um, and one of the production team there was off that show and they're like, oh my God, you yeah. were on Total Wipe. And I was like, yeah. And they were like, oh, this is, they say, did you know that this was your ball crossing? Yeah, yeah. it was shown to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Because did you, am I right, yours, I'm sure you did something with, was it like that SAS Who Dares Win or something? Didn't you do that as well? Yeah, yeah, that was another one as well, John, the SAS Who Dares Wins. That's probably a big regret of mine. I yeah. just, I did, at the time, it was, it was a good show, and I think I went in with the wrong mentality, um, the mentality that if you lost, then you were out. But it wasn't a case of that. It was a case of, I think, more of the Marine and SAS mentalities, break you down, get back up and go again. Um so for me, it was a big regret that I opted to walk out, like, like leave when we got the chance. And I think I, if I look back now, I think I've probably done pretty well on that show. But yeah, yeah it's, it's one of those. Yeah. Was, was that the one that was filmed in Bracken Beacons or something? Yeah, it was filmed in, in the UK within yeah. Wales. Yeah. It just, no, I think the, the, the oh, two seconds, John. Okay, two yeah, seconds. Sure. Yeah. Two seconds. I'll have to, I'll have to come back, John. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Right. OK, so so we're back. <laughs> okay, so I think we're on part three now. If you notice, my scenery is exactly the same, but Chris, yours has changed. Yeah. Uh, you're in a different room now, aren't you? Yeah, different room, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. that's okay. So, I mean, I suppose really this kind of sums up about how many delays we've had in general because yeah, definitely. either yeah. I've been busy, you've been busy, or chances of getting us available at the same time has been so difficult because... Um, yeah, I have a pretty uh, crazy work schedule. I work... Yeah. Uh, on a gl global role as well so uh, if I'm not in the UK I'm out somewhere else and then time's always of the essence so. yeah. Am I yeah. right? Are you still, on the show they said you're a radiographer do you still do that yeah. job now? No, so not anymore. No, I so um, I was a radiographer. That's correct. At the time of the show, uh, industrial radiography. Um, so it wasn't medical related. Oh, okay, right. And then I went on to be the uh, that the manager of that team, and then I left there to be a, um, an engineer for a, a rail manufacturer now. So um, putting all the new fleets of trains on in across the globe. To be fair, but yeah, so I work for as a, as a, uh, a project engineer now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah, you do travel around a fair bit because we were going to record this last week, weren't we? And you were in yeah. another country at the time. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, Italy at the time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, uh, yeah, you're, you're a very busy man at the moment. So uh, yeah. the fact that we've even been able to find a morning to get this done and neither of us are ill and the internet's working, <laughs> I would say that's a result. <laughs> yeah, positive, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, what um, what I'd like to know, I mean, I'm aware, okay, so you've done a few TV shows since, um, yeah. What else have you been up to since, you know, sort of that sort of period? Because I think it was, tw was that 2014, 2015, you last did something on TV? Yeah. Um, oh, what have you been doing since then, John? Um, working what, a lot by the time. Yeah. Time. Well, working, yeah. Obviously, I've got, a, what you don't see on the show, I've got a farm outside of work as well, two farms in the family, so. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is why you're called the Farm Boys on Release the House. Uh, on the Release the House, yeah, yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah so the. The other guy, the large guy with the beard, James, on the release of Hounds, he, he's um, he's a brother-in-law as well, so that's why it's farm boys, because we all live on the right. same Well, you see, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. so I'm um, busy with that. I've got children, family, so, yeah, it's just been doing family things, enjoying myself, yeah. John, and, yeah, still keeping active and fit, though. Yeah, yeah. well, um, yeah, because you've got three kids, haven't you? Is it, is it three year old? Four, 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 no, four. <laughs> I can't keep up. <laughs> so, actually, when I, was, so when I was in Argentina, the wife was pregnant with the first child at the time. Right. I think she was about six months pregnant um, right. with the first child. So, yeah, Goodness just me. been evolving since then. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That, that's why you're so busy. I mean, it's yeah. just yeah, it's <laughs> impressive. But amidst all that time, you do actually get time to train quite a bit because, I mean, we saw how fit you were on the show. What are some of the other things that you do? They mentioned boxing, hence your, your nickname. Um, yeah. Yeah, let's go there first. Um, what do you actually? You've competed in boxing, haven't you? Or... Yeah, I've had a couple of fights in the boxing, John. But yeah. um, for a number of medical reasons, I was unable to box. It was a case I had an issue with a cardiac issue actually, which was apparent on the show, but it just never seemed to affect us. Oh, and right. okay. Recently, this year, I had, a, I had two, two operations. The final operation was six hours in duration uh, to resolve a cardiac issue. So I took a bit of a knock this year. But yeah, yeah I try to keep um, physically fit. And oh, fingers crossed, everything's uh, fixed. And uh, I'm on uh, on the way to uh, being very active again, hopefully. Yeah. But I, I said the top sports that I do now, John, are probably running. I, I enjoy fell running, um, right. trail running. Still do a bit of track running as well, but um, right. predominantly fit. Um, running is the sport and I say from the show being like an obstacle course I went on to do start I started doing a few of the obstacle races such as your Tough Mudder events yeah. um, and I noticed I was winning most of the ones that I signed up for and 
Right. I thought, do you know what it is? I, I might have a, cr a crack at see if this is a, like a competitive area and yeah. did a bit of Googling and there was, yeah, there's a European Championships and a World Championship. So right. yeah. I thought, great. Um, so I signed up for um, one of the qualifying races in the UK at the McTuff in Scotland, which is absolutely brutal. It's in January, absolutely freezing. Yeah. The, the fire the fire brigade is smashing the lake with uh, with with smashing the ice on the lake for you to swim through. It's honest, it's a the real gut wrencher. And um hey. I remember telling the wife I said I signed up and she says, Why have you signed up for that? She said, You're never gonna qualify for the, for a world championship. Yeah. And, uh, anyway, I did the race, I rang her on the way home and said, uh, I've just qualified for the world championship. <laughs> elite level of <laughs> getting, yeah. So so the plan was to compete in the ch for, for England in the two thousand and nineteen World Championships uh, OCR oh. out in Vermont in the US. Right. Um but Due to COVID, that came in and the, the championships got uh, cancelled. But the, the membership rolled on, sorry, the qualification rolled on to right. the following year, 2020. But right. um, at that point, the championships were in the October and UK flights to America didn't actually open up until November. So I missed the, the, the qualifying for the second year. Oh, so the um, event went ahead and you couldn't do it? Because... Yeah, yeah. Because flights weren't active from the UK and they weren't taking oh. from the UK. Yeah, so so 2001, um, I had a rest because at the time that's when the cardiac issue had started um, yeah. in the late part of that year. Wow. And then, so my plan is for I've just signed up to do a qualifying race in 2023, the McTuff again in January. So okay. fingers crossed, John. I've I've still got still got that, the stamina in the legs. That's yeah. the one in Scotland again, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, Can Biden, <laughs> Uh, and it's going to be freezing again as well. So uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, do, do, but all overall, John, I've, I've always been a bit active on most of hobbies: rock climbing, enjoy that, um, mountain biking, everything. To be fair, I love to be outdoors. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it's impressive. I mean, what? Okay, of all the things you've done, what would you say is the toughest? I mean, you know, from the sporting side of things, what would you rate as the the, the toughest thing you've done of the lot? <laughs> oh, I've done... it's hard to call. To be fair, John, I'll tell you one of the toughest things that I did. Um, and not necessarily if I did it now in full fitness, I would be okay. But um, Mount Teedy in Tenerife, um, for my for my thirtieth birthday, I said to some friends, "We'll go and hike up Mount Teedy. Um, it's three thousand eight hundred meters, so it's obviously you can get altitude sickness at that level." Yeah. And um, and if I was in good health, I probably would have flew up it. But at the time, I was really unwell, and uh, I went to the doctors just before going out, literally two days before going out, and said, "I'm not right. I can barely walk up a flight of stairs." And yeah. they gave us. I got two courses of steroids and two courses of antibiotics. And um, he just told us I had uh, inflammation of the lungs. So, and I said, well, I'll be okay to climb this mountain in a few days' time because uh, there were seven of us going out and it was all planned and paid for. And he said, yeah, but if you feel dizzy or unwell, just turn back and come back down. But yeah. there wasn't much chance of that happening. <laughs> and so we got over there and out of the seven of us, only three of us made it to the top. And I was one of the three who got to hike to the top of the, the mountain. With the lung inflammation as well. Yeah, so well, it gets worse, John. So I got back and a month had gone by and I went to the doctors and I said, look, I'm absolutely wiped out. As soon as yeah. like I say, I'm walking up the street or anything like that, I'm still not yeah. right. And he said, oh, yeah, you've had uh, pneumonia, Mr. Henderson. And he says, it'll take about three months for your lungs to recover. <laughs> I thought, I've just climbed a mountain with pneumonia and you, you didn't even tell us. Eh? You know, it's, it's interesting you saying yeah. this about lung, because I don't know if I ever, did I tell you about when I had this lung infection in 2016? No, no. Right. I, I, I thought I had a chest infection. And yeah. so I went to the doctor. He said, oh, yeah, your lower left lung is inflamed. And I just thought he gave me some antibiotics. And I thought it was going to be like a chest infection, about four, six week recovery. And then it just kept going. And my energy, like you said, fell off a cliff. Yeah. I, it's like I turned into an 80 year old overnight. Yeah. And um, it's just I remember I just from training point of view, I could hardly do anything. I was really, yeah. really restricted. You're breathing. You couldn't take a full, you know, you couldn't take. Full yeah. Full yeah. Breathing. Yeah. And you had all of that. And you did about and you went about yeah. as well. Yeah, twelve thousand foot. Yeah, yeah. but um, long, uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. How long does it take to recover? How long does your lung take to recover from that? Out of it? it took a couple of months, I think, John. It took a couple of months before I felt right. Yeah, um, I think yeah, doing some physical exercise to help to expand the lungs. But yeah, it was uh, yeah. I think it was a month after I came back. I went to the doctors and I still wasn't correct. Yeah. yeah. But, but, but um, another, another another competitive difficult race was I did a series of mountain races in the UK. Hmm. And you could choose to be weighted in terms of carrier yeah, army bergen with forty five pounds in and right. etc. So I opted for the the loaded uh, version with the weight. Right. And the first event was a, a ten mile run. Okay. And some people can do the event uh, if you if you opt in for no weight, so you just run it as if you're doing a normal race. And uh, I cracked on with this. Me and a guy a friend went down there, and uh, I was absolutely 
parts and it was a difficult race. But I remember coming to, I think it was the final mile and the marshal came up to us and he was like, uh, are you okay? I was like, yeah, just thirsty. And um, he was like, you're in first place. I was like, yeah, I know. And he was like, um, oh, he says, you've got a, a burger on. He says, are you, are you not the unweighted? I said, no, so I've got 45 pounds in this rucksack. <laughs> he said, and he's like, you've just done 10 miles. He says, he says, the only person that we've ever had on an event that has beat the people who are unweighted. He says, there's people running this with no weight on at all. He says, you've got 45 pounds on your back over 10 miles over mountains. And he says, no you've way. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I ended up getting an knee injury from it, actually, John. But I was just running too yeah. fast with too much weight. But uh, yeah, that was it. Was, it was I didn't realise how much I was cracking on. But yeah, it was, it was good. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm thinking. You, you'd, uh, well, I know what it's like trying to run with extra weight. Except it wasn't with me uh, on a backpack. It was just I put the weight on, and I found my knees did not like it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. At least oh. you could take the weight out as soon as you finish the run. Yeah, <laughs> me, yeah. I've got to eat less <laughs> and trim back yeah. down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not as quick as the weight loss. Yeah. 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 Oh my goodness me! That was what 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 year was that in? Out of interest, I think it'll have been two thousand and. Well, I just had a memory on it. Actually, it, it was seven years ago, John. So okay, two thousand fifteen. Yeah. Twenty fifteen. Wow. Yeah. Two thousand fifteen. I'm flying. Yeah. So okay, so we, we've got a rough idea with that. What are you? You got any future plans? I mean, you said about the event in uh, January. You know, at yeah. Scotland. Um, anything else you've? Sort of time. So I, I, I've got some big plans for this year, John. There's a few. There's a Bob, Bob Graham round. That's a challenge in the UK. I want to try and crack that off. I think it's 42 peaks in the Lake District in 24 hours. I think it's, yeah, it's a good. It's quite a bit of mileage with it. I think it's the equivalent of uh, Everest Base Camp, 24,000. Right. I think it is. Or, so I think sorry. So uh, yeah, that's that's one of the challenges. Um, I'd like to try and get a triathlon in because I've never yeah. done a triathlon. On. Right. Um, but there's a few things on the to-do list, John. But yeah, hopefully I should get some of them checked off this year because now I'm back in. Uh, I feel like I'm back to full health. Yeah, so, yeah. Sort of, yeah, you're back sort of training fully. Yeah, because I see some of your updates on Strava as well. So I've noticed yeah. you're doing. It looks like you're doing a bit of track work as well, aren't you? I'm sure yes. I've seen a few yeah. on the GPS when it's like you know on a track. Yeah. Track. So a plan is to speed work generally try and do on the track. If I run for a local club, uh, what the Crook uh, Athletics Club. So it, generally, if you're doing speed work and you do it with other people, it gives you a bit more of a spur yeah. to push harder. Yeah. Got you. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, no, that that was brilliant. Um, look, thank, thanks ever so much for doing this. I, I I think in a way it's probably best to bookend this. We took we you know we saw your awards earlier. Should yeah. we wrap this up with actually showing what aired on? Because a lot a lot of people saw the series. Not I don't think as many people realised there was an award show because I think it was done yeah. after the series was over. So uh, let's see. I actually got the trophies before. Oh, did I get the trophy? No, not you know the award series came on, and then I didn't have a clue about the awards. And then all right. of a sudden, I got oh, there's a pack a package here for you here, and I thought, oh, what's that? And then, and I opened it up, and I was like, well, <laughs> I didn't have a clue that they were coming. Yeah, I just thought it was a case of the show that showed them on the TV, but you didn't actually well, receive them. You know, the only reason I found out that they gave out awards was because um, one of the guys I know from Series One. Yeah. He won an uh, he won an award, and then he posted something on Facebook. He said, "I don't believe it. I've just had a trophy in the post." So when they <laughs> did the awards for our series, I was thinking, "Like, I wonder if they'll do this again." And then yeah. bit by bit, all of you were saying, "Like, oh, I've just got a trophy." So yeah. yeah, yeah. I think also for the future, I'd like to try and check one more TV show off. I think just yeah. for the, I think I'd try and get one done. I know the gladiators in the UK are looking or yeah. some something else competitive. I think I'd like to yeah. get one. Do you know what? I gotta say, I'd love to see you on gladiators. <laughs> I, I actually think you would run rings around them. I really do because you're so you're quick on your feet. And of course, boxing is all yeah. about moving into sort of different agile. Yeah. yeah, yeah, agile. And you, you look at events like Powerball, Gauntlet. If they bring those events back, that's yeah. going to be you just sort of like you know dodging around everyone. I uh, yeah. yeah, I think you'd be uh, I think you'd be pretty sharp on that one. So, uh, no, thanks, John. Thanks. Yeah. So hopefully, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you know how it goes. Up to the end. Yeah. Well, it sounds like with that, I think the schedule they got the applications are open until April. Yeah, and they said they're filming in May and June, so that pro I reckon, as a guess, they'll probably be doing auditions around March and April, and, yeah. and they'll, you know, pick their ones from that. So, um, I, I honestly, I would absolutely love if you do get on the show, please let me know because I will be up there watching. Yeah. This is in Sheffield; they're going to film it. So, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's fairly close to you, isn't it? It's a bit, is that... Sheffield, no, I'm up in the northeast of England. Uh, right. Probably about two and a half hours to Sheffield. I think. Oh, okay. oh, so, about, so we're about the same distance apart because it would. From here, it'd be about two and a half for me to get Sheffield from yeah. know, Wales. So yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, about the same then. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. there's an idea. If you get get on the show, that could be a reunion for us. We'll get to catch yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> if, or generally, you get to invite some people along, John. I'll put yeah, you yeah. down on the list. 
Yeah. I'll have to get some banners with me, you know, go Chris or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, James John. Oh dear. I'll tell you what, right, let's let's go to this clip just to sort of bookend this uh, this whole thing and uh yeah, it's let's see, how do I do this? Share screen. Let's run on the balls. What you're about to see is absolute perfection. without using special effects. Not that I use special effects, of course. Just did it like that. Just incredible. <laughs> Winner! At the top spot, and deservedly so, it's 22-year-old knockout Chris. With a rope burn so hot, you can fry bacon on it. A lot of pain, but a tiny bit of gain because Chris wins the award for the worst eye-watering moment of him celebrating. Yeah, squeaky. I think that's a celebration. Cold water will help. Oh, yeah, I, <laughs> I'd forgotten about that comment about the bacon. Um, I, I didn't yeah. remember that. Well, John, I, good I know, it's been, it's been such a long time, but it's... I'm sure other people have, have won a couple of awards, but not normally on the same run and literally within a yeah. few seconds of each other. That is yeah. uh, that was quite unique. I just feel bad <laughs> that you had to go through so much pain in order to win these awards. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that is a fair comment, John, yeah. But, uh, yeah. But uh, no, no, again, thank you so much uh, for doing this. And I can't wait for this to be, um, you know, to be uploaded. So it'll probably take a couple of days to, um, you know, to get this out there. And um, well, like I said, I mean, if you just look at the sheer amount of questions there were from fans of the show, uh, everyone's been waiting for this one. So um, I'm just so pleased no. we managed to get this done. No, thanks very much for contacting us, John. Thanks very much for all the people who've asked questions. And uh, yeah, say if there's anything more, if there's ever a second interview with John, I'm more than happy just to oh, take yeah, it. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure we'll do a follow up at some point. In fact, yeah. you know, it'd be nice if we could get a few of us to, you know, I've, I've had this idea. I'm still learning how to use Zoom. I think if we could get a few of us together. And, uh, you know, we can all sort of bounce off each other a little bit. And then yeah. uh, you never know. A few of us will be asking each other different questions then. So, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah so be, say, it's interesting talking to you, to you because you've seen things from a different perspective as me, uh, from me. And, uh, yeah, say, yeah. like, some, you know things that I wasn't witness to and I'm vice versa. Yeah. 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 No, it'd be good. I, I think we've got to arrange something. Um, yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll sort it out in the new year. So we'll have to get you, James, and a, a few others rounded up. And uh, <laughs> let's see how it goes. Yeah. 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 Perfect. All right, nice one. Chris, thank you so much again. This has been brilliant. So, Perfect. Uh, yeah. Thanks so much, John. Awesome. Okay, catch up soon. All right, cheers. Bye. Cheers.